Okay. Hello, hello. Another question? Yes, um, we actually have some questions uh, online. So before we take more questions from the audience, I would like to engage and have a conversation with our online audience. I will ask three questions sure. and you will pick the winning question. Okay. So um, one question that came up that has been asked a lot is how do we scale to build bigger businesses, especially from informal sector, which is entrepreneurship? This question has been asked 10 times. And uh, another question is, what do you do when you seem to be the only one who believes in your dream? And the third question, it's been asked more than two times, how is it possible to compete with the Chinese? <laughs> We've played it. <laughs> Compete with the Chinese? We're going to beat them. But, look, the China story is a remarkable story. I go to China. I once disappeared in China for a whole month. Just contacting, talking to people, trying to understand China. You have to understand China. They'll be the world's biggest economy within, within a decade. Okay, that's inevitable. Even the Americans accept it. So, but at the same time, the greatest, most entrepreneurial country in the world is still the United States. Okay, it will be so for a long time. Respect that. You know, my pastor used to have a saying, eat the meat and throw away the bones. Okay? Look for the good things. Don't be critical of China. Reach out. Learn about them. Study them. Partner with them. Okay? Some of the best partners I have are Chinese. But I also have American partners that I've done business with for 30 years that would do anything for me. So reach out to make partners, to understand what are the strengths of others. So we come back again to this thing of how do we scale? On Quesay TV, I, uh, I bought a show, which uh, we paid a lot of money to get that show called The Prophet. Has anybody ever seen it? Yeah. And the guy there called Marcus Lemonis talks about the three P's. People, product, and process. You've got to have the people that don't come to work for a job. They come to work because they have a sense of purpose about what they're doing, that they believe in what they are doing, they support you. And they're gonna be understanding that you're in a creative game and you are competing with others. You gotta also, obviously you gotta have a product you gotta to sell to somebody that someone is willing to pay for. But where we fail the most on this continent is appreciation of process. What builds businesses is process building the systems, the structures that enable you to run a business where you may be in the supermarket business, but you don't have to visit everyone every day and check the money in the till. There are systems for that. Let me tell you, we have systems that from Johannesburg, if someone steals from us in a store in Burundi, We'll know about it before they do. <laughs> I spent all my time building systems. Okay? So invest in systems and processes and go out and learn from others, asking the right questions about what is the system that makes it possible for you to be this big? It's not rocket science, let me tell you. So study processes and systems. Uh, and that's how we scale what we're doing. 
before we move from the online audience back to, um, to, to the room, another question that has come up, come up a lot is how do you balance business and spiritual life? I, I'd rather not talk of it in terms of business and spiritual life. You know, let's talk in terms of business and the rest of and your life. For a start, you and the business are two separate personas. You are not the business and the business is not you. I know this sounds difficult for some because you are so passionate and involved in your business. You know, a cousin of mine came to borrow some money. And, you know, you know how it is with cousins. And he said, you know, cousin, I have an emergency. Can I have some money? I said, I don't have any money. He said, but I just read that you've got a lot of money. I said, no, you're wrong. You read that the company has a lot of money. You have no money. Now, that's very profound. Separate yourself from the business. Let the business have its own persona. That's how big businesses grow. They are going to, so if you, you can't have your cousin walk in, need some money and you take money from the till. And you give the cut, it doesn't matter what the emergency is. The business is not you, and you are not the business. You build that into your consciousness. Because the day you have partners, that's going to be extremely important. Because you'll end up with fights. When they say, but you took money, and how come you have a new car? Or, you know. So you separate yourself from the business. The day you separate yourself from the business and allow it to have its own persona, you will have a life. <laughs> so let the business have a life and you go have a life. That means attend to your family, be in your family, do the things that, you know my kids did not was in business until they were teenagers. Oh yeah, because I never allowed them to see me the businessman. I go home as their father. I go home as their dad. I mean, one of my kids came up to me and says, you know, Dad, you know, one of my friends at school said this about you. I said, really? <laughs> oh, I said, that's interesting. <laughs> well, how about your homework? <laughs> okay, you, you can't function as a CEO and chairman in your marriage. Your wife can't relate to you as Mr. Chairman. Come on. <laughs> That's how, you gotta get a life. Okay? So you separate. My wife and I don't discuss the business. We discuss uh, orphans and the things we do in our foundation and so forth. Uh, and that's it. Because I, I wanna have a life. You have to get a life. Don't overdo it. It's a long stretch. Okay? And go home, take your socks off, watch the television, go and watch the movie. My kids and I, we, they're, they're home from school. You know, we live in England. Every night we watch a movie. Oh yeah. My 15-year-old says, okay, so what are we watching today? She says, Batman. Okay, well, fine, we watch Batman or whatever it is. You've got to do that. Because if you don't do that, you wake up one morning, your kids are gone, you don't know them. And you know what? No matter what happens, you're not taking it with you. Thank you so much. That was profound.